Welcome. We are here today with Katya Bertoldi. Great to have you here. Thanks. Um, and we are here in your lab, which is new, which is quite exciting. Brand new. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about what type of research you're doing here? Yes, so I'm interested in structures. But what I'm looking at is how we can exploit geometry of structures to achieve new properties and to design systems whose property can be tuned and controlled on the fly. Interesting. So what applications would that have in real life? When we think about different structures, we can also think about a configurability. Think of it, for example, for medical application. So surgical devices, you would like to be able to go into the body and then to expand, right, to perform certain tasks. Or think about the ability to, for example, guide the propagation of sound. You would like to be able to basically guide the propagation of sound in certain direction at a given time, and then at a given time, you would like to create a barrier for sound to hmm. protect a certain environment. Right, so basically you want a structure to do one thing sometimes and do something else and other exactly. times. Exactly, yeah. there are different ways to achieve reconfigurability, right? One is to program the material itself, so to work basically with the chemistry, right? To basically introduce smart molecules into the material and then to control them with different stimuli. But another approach that we are basically exploring is the possibility to play with very simple materials, but play with geometry to achieve similar effect. And now we are trying to see how much we can push this. Okay, cool. And you brought some of those today. So can yes. you show us how these reconform and, and transform? Yeah. So for example, this is a structure we designed with Chuck Oberman, that is also a researcher at the Vinci Institute. As you can see, it's made of very, very simple material, cardboard and adhesive tape. By carefully arranging these two building blocks, we can design this structure that can go from completely flat to fully expanded. And now I'm doing this with my hands, but what you can do, you can embed actuators, and we have done that, and basically you can control the motion from outside. That's really cool, and I can definitely see how that'd be helpful to, for shipping. You know, you want something to lie flat on a truck, and, and then, then you pop it up. You want to pop it up, exactly. Yeah. And to, so you can achieve all sorts of transformation by playing with geometry, and clearly what we did, we developed algorithms to be able to predict this geometry. So what is it about the Wies Institute that allows you to do all this interdisciplinary work and collaboration that you might not be able to do in other places? I think for me the Wies is a very exciting and fascinating place. Give me the opportunity to collaborate with a range of people with very different backgrounds. People that are very good at designing new materials, smart materials. People that are excellent at designing new robots. People who are focusing on uh, architecture. So it's quite unique to have all these people under the same umbrella. And they also have support to basically pursue all these different research directions. I'm excited about the collaboration I'm having with Joanna and Jennifer, where we try to combine smart material and complex geometries. We have also been working with Connor Walsh, Rob Wood, and George Whiteside. We are mostly helping them with models to predict basically the behavior of these robots. So instead of using an empirical approach to design them, we are trying to develop methodologies to design robots with a predictable response. So speaking of robots, do you yeah. want to show us the, the snake robot? Inside, there is a tube made of rubber. It's an elastomeric tube. So when we pump in air, it elongates in one direction. So now, in order to make it to move, what we did, we basically cover this uh, actuator with the skin, and then we laser cut this pattern of cuts. And now what happens is when it's stretched, you see the cuts pop up. Opens up a little bit, Open yeah. Mm -hmm. So they create an asymmetry. And so this basically makes this very simple machine to move. Basically, one actuator is enough to achieve a certain movement. So it's significantly simplify what is needed to achieve basically locomotion. I know you just had a baby, so I'm sure that that takes a lot of your time. Yeah, we have two babies. Are there any things that you wish that you could reconfigure to make it easier to deal with your two kids? So a stroller could, for my kids. <laughs> yeah, so if you could reconfigure a stroller, what would you turn it into? I would like something very small that I can pack with me and bring in somewhere. Something much lighter than what it is, because right now, I mean, it's quite heavy. So maybe that's a new project? <laughs> that's a new project for the future, for sure. <laughs> Bioconfigurable strollers. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing your work with us today, Katya. It was really interesting. You're welcome.